um welcome to another lesson on vector spaces and we are still on subspaces okay so we want to make sure that the given statement here that is true okay so we are supposed to prove that any intersection of subspaces of a given vector space v is also a subspace of v so what we mean is that um you have a vector space v okay so you have v as a parent vector space and it has two subspaces let's say w1 and then another one w2 okay and then we are trying to say that the intersection of these two w1 and w2 whatever element that it gives or whatever number of vectors that we get out of that that set that we get is actually a vector space and we want to write a mathematical proof to that okay so now let's let's write a proof so suppose it can be any number of vectors. It can be four vector spaces and their intersection is a vector space. So, I mean, I'm going to choose um, without lots of generality, W1 and W2 to be subspaces. Suppose W1 and W2 are subspaces of V. That's the vector space, right? And that we have W1 intersection W2 to be equal to some set, let's say X, some vectors X, such that X belong to W1 and X belong to W2. Okay? So we are collecting all the set that belongs to both W1 and W2, okay? Now, what are some of the criteria that makes a given set um, a vector space, okay? Oh, sorry, a subspace. If you have your vector space, let's say V, for some subset of it to be a, a subspace of it, it must, one, contain the zero vector, okay? The zero vector should be part of it. And if you remember, we define a subspace as a subset of the vector space itself. And we said for a sub subset of a given vector space to be a subspace, and I'm using this a lot of words together here, um, it has to, one, contain the zero vector. So we know for sure that the zero vector here belongs to W1, intersection W2. Why? Because since W1 and W2... Are, are subspaces okay so we said that if something is a subspace and it contains a zero vector so if indeed both w1 and w2 are subspaces of v then obviously they contain the zero vector so the first part of us showing that the intersection between them has a zero vector is you know obvious right because both of them originally we know they contain the zero vector so it's not hard to, sh to know that the zero vector actually belongs to their intersection. The second part is let some x1, these vectors x2, belong to w1 intersection w2. So both x1 and x2 are found in w1 and w2 together. All of them are found in these two um vector sp uh, subspaces okay then want to show that if you have two um, vectors that are in this intersection set okay then the sum is also in the intersection set notice that so what we want to do is want to show that x1 plus x2 these are vectors also belong to w1 intersection w2 how do you show that so notice that um x1 belong to, um sorry x1 and x2 belong to w1 and the same thing x1 x2 belong to w2 okay and we are saying that w1 and w2 are subspaces okay then if they are subspaces we know that x1 plus x2 these are vectors belong to w1 because that is the definition of a subspace 
that if it's W1 is a subspace, then any two vectors you pick from that W1 when you sum it, it should belong to that same W1, okay? And we also know that X1 plus X2, since it is, they are both in W2, their sum will also belong to W2. And wait a minute. We are saying that this sum belongs to W1 and this sum also belongs to W2. So obviously, hence, the sum X1 plus X2 belongs to W1 intersection W2 because it is found in both of them. Okay, so we've been able to show that if you pick two elements or two vectors that are in W1 intersection W2, then the sum also belongs to the W1 intersection W2. Now the last part to show is that if you pick any scalar, so the third one, K that belongs to the field we are interested in, and we'll pick any vector, say X, belonging to this intersection, then the scalar multiple of x should be in w1 intersection w2 and we're going to use the same idea that w1 and w2 are subspaces okay so we know we know that kx okay because okay so let's let's start from here we know that um x belongs to w1 and x belongs to w2 why because x is in the intersection and the intersection is telling us that it is all the vectors that are in both of them okay since and then since w1 and w2 are subspaces we also know that um kx belong to w1 and kx belong to w2 so this will imply that what kx will belong to w1 intersection w2 because that's the definition of intersection if something belongs to both of them then it is in their intersection so that is it that ends the proof right we've been able to show that the intersection of any given subspaces of a given vector space is actually a subspace itself now what about the union what about the union of subspaces of a vector space what can you say about it is it if you have the union of a given subspaces is it also a, um, a subspace let's try this i'm gonna i know the solution here is no this the union is not a vector space and i'm going to provide an example try to also come up with other examples if you can um you can i mean you can come up with i'm going to write two examples let's so let v the vector space you are looking at here be the r2 okay r2 subspace and then let w1 be equal to the x axis which is defined by some x comma zero right that's the x axis because all the other part of the y is zero and then w2 be equal to the y axis which is defined as zero comma y okay now if you look at a union w1 union w2 will be equal to this um x comma zero say that x belongs to the real numbers and then union zero comma y say that y belongs to the real numbers okay actually that was how these were supposed to be defined um and this y belong to the real numbers now if i pick an element let's say um one comma zero which belongs to w1 and then 0, 0,1, which belongs to W2. Let me sum these two. This is one vector I can call maybe little w1 and then this to be little w2. Okay, the little w1 plus little w2 is equal to the sum of these two is going to give me 1, 1. And this does not belong to W1 union W2. Why? Because 
w1 any element that belongs to w1 um union w2 is supposed to be either on the x axis or the y axis but this is a point that is not on both each it's, it's not on either of them okay so if you plot one one you're gonna have one here one here and this will be the point but this is this is telling us that that we have all the points that are either on the x axis so one zero is on this point and then zero one is on on that point okay so one zero is on here and then zero one is on here we are interested in the points that are on exactly the x axis and then the y axis but when we sum these two points that belong to w1 and w2 and it belongs to their union as well we don't get the solution we get is not in their union so this makes it um, not true for um, a general case where you are having the union of subspaces another example is you can consider um, the vector space V say that um, um, you are looking at n by n square matrices and then maybe you can look at w1 to be upper triangular matrix maybe upper triangular matrix um, you can define that in w2 to be lower triangular matrix and you realize that when you pick an upper triangular matrix and you sum it would together with um, a lower triangular matrix you get a matrix that is neither of them okay so yeah that is um the proof to why the intersection of any subspace is actually a subspace i hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned as i bring to you different aspect of linear algebra okay see you in our next lesson